Welcome everybody to the started and here we go. Welcome everybody to the Texas RIAs, the largest by far network of real estate investor associations in the great state of Texas with over 150,000 members, participants, and attendees dating back to 2003. They say if you have the slightest interest in real estate, the first thing to do is to go join your local real estate investor association, because that's how you get plugged in. For you, the guys that were here earlier, that's where you get your power team. We have lenders, we have marketing resources, we have all kinds of investment opportunities, training, you name it, everything you need to be a real estate investor, you can get at your local real estate investor association. And my job is to make you educated and contributing members of this community. And we're gonna to start today with a, uh, a market presentation. I'm gonna give you a little data uh, on what's going on in the real estate market. Uh, so here we are in the real estate market. And um, what, uh, what's the biggest news in real estate over the last couple of years? What's that? Rates? Mortgage rates, interest rates, interest rates. Okay, interest rates. So interest rates, uh, they've changed over the last couple of years, right? That's, that's what you're saying. Like what happened to interest rates? They went up, they went up. Okay, so we're gonna do a little audience participation tonight. And I'm gonna ask for everybody's opinion. And opinions cannot be wrong. So whether your opinion is up or down or right or left, whatever, you can't have a wrong opinion, it's just an opinion. So I'd like to get everybody's opinion. So I'm going to give you two choices. Do you think interest rates are high or low? Let's do, a, let's do a, a poll of the audience. Who thinks interest rates are high right now? Raise your hand if you think interest rates are high right now. Okay, who thinks interest rates are low right now? Who thinks interest rates are low right now? Okay, we got a bunch of highs and a few lows, and a lot of you are not voting, so you didn't understand, okay? There's no wrong opinion. You, you, give me your opinion because you can't be wrong. You know, high or low, there's no right or wrong. Uh, I'll share my opinion. I think interest rates are normal right now. Okay, that's my opinion. Uh, you know, I have been real estate investing since 2003, and I've got about $30 million worth of houses, single family rental properties in Texas. That's the smartest thing I did, uh, was buy a bunch of rental properties and hold them for a long time. And uh, most of my rental properties have an interest rate uh, between six and a half and seven and a half percent because by all historic standards, including 2003, that's normal. Now, a few years ago, interest rates got down to 3%. That's not normal, okay? That's not normal, okay? Now, before a few years ago, when was the prior time that interest rates got below 3%? When, when did that happen before that? What's that? That did not happen in 2008. Interest rates never got below 3% in 2008, 9, 10, it never happened. It didn't happen in your lifetime, in your parents' lifetime, in your grandparents' lifetime, or your great, 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 great grandparents' lifetime. The answer is it has never happened before in the history of humanity. Now, when is it gonna happen again? I have no idea, okay? But if I were to guess, I would say never. In your lifetime, in your kid's lifetime, in your great, 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 great grandkids' lifetime. And what would have to happen to make that happen again I would say you'd be more concerned about the zombie apocalypse than interest rates, okay? So I doubt it's gonna happen, but nobody knows for sure about what's gonna happen in the future. But usually people's opinions uh, are based on perspective. So if you've only been kind of paying attention to this real estate thing for the last few years, you'd say interest rates are high. If you've been investing for a longer period of time, you'd say interest rates are low or even normal. In fact, back in 1981, just to give you more perspective, interest rates got all the way up to 18%. So for anybody that's complaining about 6% or 6.5%, what about 18%? Okay, if you were investing in back in, 18, uh, in 1981, you look at the interest rates right now and you say, oh my God, this is, I can't believe they're giving away the money for free. And it's just perspective. It's perspective. Uh, so speaking of perspective, let's talk about interest rates some more. Um, you know, when interest rates go up, uh, what happens to home prices? Let's do it a poll, up or down, what do you think? When interest rates go up, who thinks home prices go up? Okay, when interest rates go up, who thinks home prices go down? Okay, we got a bunch of downs and a couple of ups. Um, they do both, interestingly enough. Um, there's forces pushing up and down at the same time. 
Okay, the truth, real estate doesn't care about interest rates. Real estate cares about two things, supply and demand. It is the purest market in the world, supply and demand, right? So only in as much as something affects supply and demand will it affect real estate prices. Now, for sure, for sure, when interest rates go up, homes are less affordable than they used to be. They are, right? And because of that, there's less demand. And when there's less demand, that pushes prices down. But there are some other forces at play. What are the other forces? Why did they raise interest rates? To battle what? Inflation. You know, and they talk a lot about inflation. And every time they talk about inflation, they always talk about it like it's this bad thing. Inflation is bad. We have to whip inflation and get inflation under control, right? This is evil inflation, right? Personally, I disagree. I personally, I'll tell you something odd about me. I love inflation. Man, I go to bed praying for more inflation. I, I'm thrilled with it. I just have another name for it. You know what I call it? I call it appreciation. Same thing, guys. When, 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 the, when the money becomes worth less, where do you want your wealth? Physical stuff. What becomes worth more? Everything else. Okay? Houses, gold, assets, right? By, by the very definition of inflation, right, money's worth less because everything else is worth more, right? So, so like, how many of you have owned a house for the last three years? Who's owned a house for the last three years? Congratulations, you're a lot richer than you were three years ago. Nice. By the way, what if you had 20? What if you had 100? What if you had 200? Can't go back, can you? Going forward, you can do anything you want. When's the best time to plant a tree? 20 years ago. When's the second best time to plant a tree? Uh, that would be today. Today would be good. So yeah, you know, uh, inflation is pushing prices up, right? So that's something pushing prices up. There's something else interesting you're going to see that's going on in the marketplace. Um, right now, economy is not bad, right? People have jobs. Uh, people should be buying houses, but they're not, right? And there's a reason, interest rates. But there's also something else going on, okay? What's going on, okay? Normally, when you look at houses for sale, two-thirds of the houses being sold are resale, one-third are new construction. That's normal. Right now, it's inverted. Right now, it's two-thirds new construction, only one-third resale. Why? Why is nobody selling their house? They don't want to lose their rate because they all got one of those 3% mortgages, and they don't want to give it up. If we sell our house, everybody should be going like this. Hey, honey, let's go buy a bigger, nicer house. But they're not because they're saying, oh, if I sell my house, I lose my 3% mortgage and I have to go get a new house with a 6 or 7% mortgage. So nobody's selling, right? And because of that, the supply is down, right? And when supply is down, what does that do to home prices? Pushes them up. In fact, it's so down, we have other problems. Um, 2000, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We had subprime lending. Remember that? In 2005, if you wanted to go and get a loan, you walked into a bank, you said, I want a loan. A banker, where they'd walk up, they'd hold a mirror under your nose. If they saw fog, you got a loan. That was the loan application process. And then in 2008, all the banks went bankrupt. Well, they were too good, too big to fail, right? So we bailed them out. And eventually, the banks got back into the lending business. But all these years later, today, what do you have to do to get a loan? Turn over your firstborn, fill out a 1,900-page application, submit blood samples. A lot. A lot. You have to do a lot to get a Money got cheap, but it never got easy, right? And because it didn't get easy, we have a problem. We're not building enough houses. 2002, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Money was easy. Everybody could get loans. Builders are building houses out over the horizon. As far as the eye can see, what they do with all that inventory, all those houses, they gave everybody a loan. And then in 2008, the banks went bankrupt. Subprime lending stopped. All those buyers disappeared like that. And we had a market crash, right? When the banks finally got back into the lending business, it never got easy. It got cheap, but it never got easy. And consequently, we haven't been building enough houses. In fact, on a national basis, we are in the middle of a housing shortage. Who's heard that we're in a housing shortage? Yeah, we have six million fewer houses than we need
for the number of people that need a place to live. And we don't have enough supply, what does that do to prices? Pushes them up. So you see what I'm saying? There's things pushing prices up, there's things pushing prices down, right? And their forces are fighting each other. Now this, this blue line here, this is interest rates, going back to 1981, like I said, interest rates from 70 to 81 got all the way up to 18%. This red line down at the bottom, it'll come back here in a minute, uh, is average uh, median home prices. And as you can see, interestingly enough, when interest rates went up, guess what? Home prices went up. And then when interest rates came down, home prices went up some more. And when interest rates went up and down, up and down, and up and down, you know what happened to home prices? They still went up. Now, there were some bubbles. There's that big bubble, remember 2008, 9, 10, big bubble, little bubble. So there's some little bubbles, but it's not as simple as to say interest rates up, home prices down. When interest rates go up, the market shrinks, which means there's fewer buyers, but there's also fewer sellers. And when you have less supply and less demand, what happens to home prices? Uh, and the answer is they flatten out. And houses are flat. Prices are flat. They haven't gone up, they haven't gone down, they haven't really done a whole lot of anything. Uh, and we'll get into more detail of that. Now, but speaking of home prices in general, Let's do another opinion poll of the audience. What do you think? Are houses expensive right now or are they cheap? Who thinks houses are expensive right now? Raise your hand if you think houses are expensive. Who thinks houses are cheap right now? Who thinks houses are cheap? Okay, I think they are so freaking cheap, I can't believe how cheap these houses are. They're practically giving these houses away. I mean, these houses are so freaking cheap. You guys should be buying 100 houses a piece. You'd be crazy not to buy houses at these prices. They are so freaking cheap. I can't believe how cheap these houses are. You know, and if you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, here's what I want you to do. I want you to have a conversation with somebody that I know that you trust implicitly. In fact, I want you to ask the person you trust more than anyone in the world whether they think houses are expensive or cheap. And I guarantee this person is gonna tell you and convince you that houses are incredibly cheap right now. So here's who I want you to ask. I want you to ask future you, okay? Ask yourself the 20 years plus of yourself, ask yourself that's gonna be alive 20 years of the future, what do you think of home prices back in 2024? And you know what future you is gonna tell you? I can't believe you could buy a house in Houston, Texas for less than $2 million. You should have bought them all. So I started investing in real estate in Austin, Texas in 2003. And I bought a whole bunch of ridiculously expensive houses. I couldn't believe how expensive houses because it felt like so expensive that, that the market went up and the houses were incredibly expensive. And I bought all of these houses, mostly in the middle of the city, uh, for ridiculous prices, 110,000, 120,000. Some of them I paid as much as 150,000. I know, 150,000 for a house, a ridiculous amount of money for a house. And today, in 2024, those houses are worth 500,000, 750,000. I have one that's worth more than a million dollars, okay? So whatever you think house prices are, it's not what they are now, it's what they're gonna be in 20 years. Because whatever you think they are today, compared to 20 years from now, there's the exact same thing. 20 years from now, they're gonna be looking at houses today exactly like we look at houses today and we compare them to 20 years ago. They are so freaking cheap. The biggest mistake I made investing in real estate for 20 years, I should have bought more. I should have bought more. Most of my wealth today came from buying houses 20 years ago. And if I could only go back, I should have bought them all. It really doesn't matter if the market's going up or down or sideways. Because when you own something for 20 years, right, what does it matter? Some I bought at the high, some I bought at the low, interest rates high, interest rates low, it frankly doesn't matter. I bought a bunch of houses, I took the keys, I handed them to a property manager, and I said, I'll see you in 20 years. And that's how you manage properties. You don't wanna know about them, you don't wanna to touch them, you don't wanna paint them, you don't wanna to talk to tennis. You hand the keys to a property manager and say, I'll see you in 20 years, and that's exactly what I did. And 20 years later, that portfolio is now worth $30 million. And a bunch of the mortgages got paid off by the tenants. Thank you very much, tenants. 
and a bunch of the properties doubled, doubled, doubled in value, right? While the mortgage got paid off by the tenants. That's how you get wealthy. So my one piece of advice to everybody here, buy rental properties, right? You can't buy only rental properties. You've got to make money. You've got to do other things. But man, your life 20 years from now, the decisions you make on the ones you hold will probably determine that life 20 years from now more than anything else you do, more than anything else you do. So let's talk about the market and what's going on in the market. First, I'll give you what's called the Texas Roundup. Uh, the average price house in the state of Texas is $425,000. Let me put that up there. And it's up 1% over the last year. It's flat. The market has been flat for the last year. Median price house in Texas, $340,000, and it's flat, right? The market went up, it went up, and then it just flattened out. It's been flat for the last year. Um, now, the most important number on this chart I would say it's this number in the middle. If you really want to understand what's going on in the market, where things are going, I would say, look at inventory. What is inventory? Months of inventory. The best way to explain months of inventory would be this. If you took all the houses for sale and you stopped adding any more houses for sale, so we just take what we got that's for sale in the MLS and we just sell them until, the, until they're gone, right? How long would it last? That's months of inventory. And the answer is 4.8 months of inventory. That's how many months of inventory we have. Now, to put that into perspective, let's put that in perspective. They say if there's less than six months of inventory, you have a seller's market. If there's more than six months of inventory, you have a buyer's market. If there's right around six months of inventory, you have a neutral market. We are still in a seller's market, interestingly enough. Now, it's a weak seller's market compared to a year ago when we were in a strong seller's market. Question. How you define inventory? Yeah. yeah. If you took only the houses for sale, if you look in the MLS right now, there's uh, a total of 129,000 houses for sale across the state of Texas. Okay. If you stopped adding any more houses for sale, you just let let the market let people buy what's for sale, but you don't add any more. How long would that last? Right before the shelves are empty. That's that's inventory. Right, which is 4.8 months, which is also the average amount of time it takes to sell one house. Now, that's average. Some houses are going to sell much faster. Some are going to take much longer. Right, The average right across all those houses is 4.8 months, which is a seller's market. And people are like, oh, the market's dead or dying or weak or whatever. Perspective. right? By all historical standards, we're in a seller's market. Compared to a year ago, it's not as strong as it was. Absolutely true. And by the way, as I go through all this data with you, I do want to do a little disclaimer here. Um, this is the Texas RIAs. We're not here to sell you something or to persuade you of some opinion. There are groups out there like the National Board of Realtors, and every year they give a forecast and they always say the market is going up. No matter what's happening, the market is going up. When we think the market is going up, we're going to tell you we think the market is going up. When we think the market is going down, we'll tell you the market is going down. And when we think it's sideways, we'll tell you sideways. Right? And we have strategies to make money in up and down and sideways markets. So they're all good, right? But it is good to also be a student of the market, right? Most of this data that I'm sharing with you is pulled from the Texas A&M School of Real Estate and a number of online resources. I'll show you where you can access this data yourself. In fact, you can even get this on our social media pages. But yes, we're still in a seller's market. Now, more history, more perspective. In 2021, prices in Texas uh, went up 18% in one year. 2022, they went up another 10.7% in one year. 2023, flat. So the market went way up, went up a little more, and then it flattened out. And it's pretty much been bouncing flat ever since. The volume is down, right? The number of sales is down. We're not selling as many houses. The number of buyers is down. There's not as many buyers, but there's also not as many sellers. So when you have less buyers and less sellers, you have a smaller market, but prices flatten out, right? So they're not up, they're not down, they're just flat. So let's look at some of the specific other cities, starting with Houston, Texas. The average price house in Houston, Texas is $422,000, up 0.9%. Basically, it is flat over the last year. Median price, 337, down 0.3%. It is also flat. Months of inventory, 4.5 months of inventory, a little better than the state. Uh, lease prices, let's talk about lease prices. This is commercial. Lease prices are actually up 
2%. So what does that tell you about multifamily? Are the apartments full or are the apartments empty? They're full. Yeah, they're full. People need a place to live. People keep moving to, uh, to Texas. And uh, so, yeah, the houses are full and the, and the leases are full. Uh, Houston history. 2021, prices were up 16% in one year. 2022, up another 10% in one year. 2023, flat, right? And it's been pretty much flat for the last year. Slight upticks, but in general, pretty much flat. Okay, uh, Dallas, the big D. Average price house in Dallas, $510,000, and it is flat. Second most uh, expensive city in Texas. Median price for, uh, what is that, 405, and also flat. Months of inventory, four months of inventory. Texas, uh, Dallas is the hottest market in Texas. And I don't know why, but it's an interesting kind of data point. Dallas has always been the bellwether of Texas. If you kind of want to get a sense for where things are going, always look at Dallas first. First to go down, first to go up. It's the first mover. I don't know why, but we've been trace, tracking this for 20 years, and it's always been the case for 20 years. Do you have a question? Is because of the existence of privileges and opportunities? I have no freaking idea. Who knows? Maybe it's as good a theory as any. I don't know. Right? There's something about the mix of the economy and the size of the market and who knows what. But there's things we look at, like inventory gives you an idea where we are. Right, condominiums, that's another thing. Uh, we call condominiums the canary in the coal mine. What does that mean? If you wanna know where things are going, look at condos, right? Because condos, when the market starts to get soft, condos are the first thing to go down. When the market heats up, they're the last thing to come back. So if condos are hot, everything is hot, right? If you can sell a condo, you can sell anything. That's the saying, right? So you look at condo inventory, and then you look at inventory, you look at Dallas. These are all what we call bellwethers to give you some clue about where the market may be going. Um, in Dallas, uh, in uh, uh, 2021, uh, uh, prices were up 20% in one year. 2022, up another 15% in one year. And then 2023, just like the rest of Texas, flat. Well, it's up 1%, which I'm going to say flat. Uh, lease prices in Dallas are also flat. Uh, okay, Austin, let's talk about Austin. Now, Austin is an outlier, and I'm going to explain why. Something very unusual never happened before happened in Austin. But the average price house in Austin is $573,000. Average, average house, five seventy-three. dollars We did a little research trying to understand this better. It turns out Austin, where'd the name come from? It's actually Latin for San Francisco. Yeah. Elon Musk moved to freaking Austin. And then, and then Meta, and then Apple, and then, and then Amazon, and then Samsung, and then all these high-tech companies, and they brought in all these high-tech, you know, six-figure workers, and, and the price is just crazy, off the chart crazy. Uh, median price, 435, uh, down 4.3%, uh, uh, average price, 573, down 0.6%. Months of inventory, 4.7, it's about the state. Uh, but what happened in Austin? This is what happened in Austin, 2021. In 2021, in Austin, Texas, prices went up 29% in one year. In one year, 29% in one year, and I was there. And I'll tell you what was going on in 2021. In 2021, in Austin, Texas, there was 0 0.4 months of inventory, less than two weeks of inventory in the whole town. Somebody would put a house on the market, any house on the market. They'd get 11 offers in a weekend. One would win, 10 would lose. So the 10 that lost would put an offer on a second house. They got 11 offers in a weekend. One would win, 10 would lose, right? And after this happened over and over again, the buyers started screaming at the realtors, what's wrong with you? You're giving me bad advice. I keep getting outbid. You know, what do you have to do to buy a house around here? And in 2021 in Austin, Texas, it became normal in that abnormal market for people to buy houses five to 10% above appraised value. Now to put that in perspective, a bank will not allow you to buy a house above appraised value. The entire down payment and the entire loan cannot exceed even by $1 the appraised value of the house. If you really wanna buy a house above the appraised value, you gotta put your down payment you got to get your loan, and then you got to pump up with a big pile of money after all of that to pile on top of all of that. And in that unusual year of 2021, it became normal for people to buy houses 5 to 10% above appraised value. 
2022 didn't get much better because prices went up another 10.4%. And then in 2023, it corrected down 8%. So most of Texas went up 30% and then it went flat. Austin went up 40%, came down 10, and then it went flat. If you bought a house three years ago, you made 30%. Congratulations. If you bought a house one year ago, you lost 10%. I'm sorry, but that goes back to perspective. And then finally, we have San Antonio, which is the most affordable city in Texas. The average price house in San Antonio, 372, down 3%. Uh, median price, uh, 314, down 2%. Months of inventory, 5.3 months of inventory. It's the slowest market in Texas. And it puts some perspective into it, up 16% in 2021, 2022 up another 12%, 2023 flattened out or really down a little bit, down 2%. San Antonio has a different marketplace, um, doesn't have as uh, high a tech, high income as the other cities in Texas. Okay, so where are things going next? Well, what's driving the market? Let's talk about some of the market drivers. First thing is the economy. Now, real estate doesn't care about the economy directly, but it does care about supply and demand. But when the economy is doing reasonably well, right now it's doing reasonably well, people feel a little better, okay about it. They're a little more likely to buy real estate. Uh, then we have consumer confidence. This is an interesting statistic. They ask people, what do you think? Are you confident? And they rank it on a zero to 200 scale. And anything under 100, people are scared. Anything over 100, people are confident. Right now, we're at 103, kind of right in the middle, but just over the middle. So people are not scared. They're a little confident. Uh, when they're a little confident, they're a little more likely to buy a house. Uh, then we have the unemployment rate. Anything under 5% unemployment is considered solid unemployment. Texas is 4%. You know, we have solid unemployment, right? So people have jobs. When they have jobs, they're a little more likely to buy real estate. Uh, growth, job growth, are we creating more jobs? We are creating jobs like crazy here in Texas. So as all the big companies are moving to Texas. So job growth is strong. That is pushing uh, the market up a little bit. Uh, and then we have the stock market. Now again, real estate doesn't care about the stock market directly, but it cares about it indirectly. People look at their 401k. When their 401k goes up, they feel what? They feel wealthy. Er, right? When they feel wealthier, they're a little more likely to buy real estate. When their 401k goes down, they feel poorer and they're a little less likely to buy real estate. So the stock market has been doing well. Uh, and then we have interest rates. Interest rates went up a lot. Uh, and that, of course, pushes prices uh, down, although they have started to come down a little bit, obviously, and their forecast to come down a little more. House price trajectory is flat, not really up, not down. So this is not pushing up or down, it's pushing sideways. Uh, closed sales trajectory, closed sales are down a little bit, although that's starting to turn a little bit. Um, pending sales trajectory is flat. Um, active listings is flat. We are adding listing, but we're just keeping up with demand. Um, months of inventory, months of inventory is pretty good. 4.7 months of inventory. We're in a seller's market. So that's a, a, a bullish sign pushing up a little bit. Uh, housing permit trajectory, we're just barely keeping up with demand. We are building more houses, but we're not, we don't have easy money. So we're just barely keeping up with demand. Uh, now migration, now this should be like a triple size bullet. Not all of these bullets are the same. Right, this is a big one. This should be like at least triple the size of all the others. What is migration? Migration is the ratio of people moving in versus people moving out. In other words, it's population growth because everybody that lives here or moves here needs a place to, to live, okay? And something's going on with migration. Last year, California lost 500,000 people. Last year, Texas gained 500,000 people. Where do you think they went? And then we got another 15 million people. We don't really know where any of them went, except for a bunch of them, I'm sure, ended up here. So people are moving here like crazy. And everybody that moves here has to live somewhere, either in an apartment or in a home, right? And that's why we have growing demand. And as we have growing demand, that's a big upward force on prices. So that's pushing prices up. Uh, and then what else? Uh, construction rate. Let's talk about that. Something interesting has happened there. Contractors are aging out. 
they're, they're dying. The average general contractor is 58 years old. And they keep getting older because nobody's joining contractors. So if you, if you, have, a, if you have a teenager, here's some advice. Don't send them to college. Buy them a hammer. Seriously. They're going to make so much more money. Right? They're not going to have to work for some jerk. Right? They're going to make a fortune. They don't have to work for a jerk. And they have no student debt. It's like it's incredible. Contractors are making a fortune. You know, I used to be able to build houses for like $100 a foot, and then it was like $120 a foot, and then it's like $150 a foot, then it's like $180 a foot, then it's $200 a foot, then it's $220 a foot. Now, sometimes, depending on where it is, it's like up to $300 a foot to build a house. It costs a fortune to build a house. And that's two things. Material costs have gone up, and the labor is skyrocketing. So, yeah, get your kid a hammer and, and give them a great life. You know, and don't, don't send them to college. Uh, but, yeah, they're, they're aging out. Uh, and then there's some wild cards. I, I think there's an election going on. I heard something about that. There's a few wars booming around there. And, and then what's going to happen with interest rates? You know, we don't know. But we have some pretty good ideas. So that's the data. And let's ask for your opinion. And there's no right or wrong opinion. So who thinks, based on all of this, who thinks prices from here are probably going to go up? Who thinks prices are probably going to go up? Who thinks prices are probably going to go down? Okay, got a bunch of ups and a couple of downs. Um, I will give you our forecast. Um, we think that was it, folks, as far as if you were looking for a bottom of the market, not much happened, right? And uh, a couple of months ago started to turn a little bit, but there's not much happening, right? Unless we have some major unforeseen economic disaster, a nuclear bomb or something like that, we know the supply, we know the demand and there's not much going on, right? Interest rates, if anything, are the one thing that are expected to continue to drop. If interest rates do drop as expected and as forecast, that's really the only thing that's kind of holding the demand at bay a little bit. So that will probably juice the market, but probably not by a whole lot, right? We expect prices should be up maybe a couple of percent this year and sales will be up maybe a couple of percent. So we don't expect much to change at all, okay? I'd say the market is very normal and it's not expected to change in a big way. And by the way, we've been doing forecasts, Texas RIAs. This is not my forecast. I just are reporting the forecast. But the Texas RIAs have been doing forecasts for 20 years. And I'm going to tell you, 20 years into 20 years, it's pretty much spot on every year. And it's not because we're like super smart. It's because it's super simple, right? Predicting the economy is almost impossible. Predicting the stock market, I will argue, is impossible. Predicting real estate, not that hard. And the reason is because we know almost everything. We know exactly how many people are here. We know how many houses we have. We know how many houses we're building. We know how many people are having babies. We know about how many people are moving here, right? So we know exactly what the supply is. We know exactly what the demand is. There's a couple little things we don't know. I don't know exactly what's going to happen with, uh, with inventory, I'm sorry, with uh, uh, interest rates. But they're probably going to go down a little bit, and that'll probably juice the market a little bit. And that's the market update. So was that helpful for you guys? Did you enjoy that? Yeah. All right. Uh, any other questions on that? Any other questions? Yeah, question. When you talk about interest rates, I, I bought my first home in the 80s. Yeah. 13%, yeah, right. me too, 1981, yeah. I, had, I think mine was like 14%, but yeah. So there wasn't a problem. Yeah. Okay, well, that's a good deal. Do you still own it? Yeah. No, I don't. We sold it. Crap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't so you wish you still owned it? Yeah, oh well, can't go back. But, you know, buy more, they're on sale right now. Yeah, they're giving them away. I can't believe how cheap these houses. How much do you pay for it, you remember? 75,000, ridiculous price, right? That was for a triplex? A threeplex. A threeplex. So you had to buy, you had to pay 75, it was $25,000 a house. I couldn't believe you paid that much. Ridiculous prices back then, right? Yeah. yeah. Mark my words, folks. Ask future you, right? 20 years from now, they're going to be saying, oh my God, I can't believe you could buy a house in Houston for less than $2 million. I mean, it's just like, you should have bought them all. You should have bought them all. What's that? Yeah, like everything. Like, it's all, it's all relative, though. And that's the point.